and the floor is yours. Okay. All right. I I don't have a nice um, a slide of uh, who I am, but uh, I think you care more about what I'm going to present uh, than what uh, uh, I'm doing here. So. What are we doing today? So today uh, we talk about how we use the world's largest threat intelligence networks uh, to, to find VPN and proxy IPs. Or you could also say this is the four-step guide uh, to s uh, snitching to Netflix, right? So the first step, there's actually a hidden step zero, is to shamelessly plug your company at HackLoo. So... <laughs> Actually, this is very useful for, for understanding what we do and uh, how our data looks like. So uh, what do we do? We're a French startup. Um, we're building an open source IDS, IPS, so intrusion prevention, intrusion detection system with a crowdsourcing component. So a crowd sec has a crowdsourcing component. Very funny joke. So the software, it reads your logs and it blocks attacks. And then it reports these attackers to our servers. So this is the crowdsourcing aspect we get information about the IP, the kind of scenario that it did. So this guy did SSH brute force at this time. And we collect this, uh, aggregate it, and turn it into... Oh, sorry, this microphone. Um, aggregate it and turn it into a block list that is then ingested back in the security engine. And this way you can preemptively uh, block threats uh, before they ever reach your machine. So this block list, it has about 60,000 IPs. And um, it has a 5% rollover each day, so it's pretty real-time. Um, so we have this nice description in text. Uh, it's better as a picture. So these are open source users, also companies by now. We're selling it as well. But mostly open source users uh, that protect real workloads using our stuff. They report it. Uh, we aggregate these reports. And then we have what we call the expert system. It's an automated system that decides whether an IP should be redistributed or not, uh, mainly based on uh, how big of a network it has attacked and so on. And then we distribute it back as a block list to the people. And uh, me, I work as a data scientist here. I'm also here with Mathieu, who's coming this afternoon. And we work mainly on this expert system part, so managing the trust because it's open source. So we necessarily cannot say uh, these people are uh, giving us trusted IPs. They might be giving us bullshit. And uh, we kind of have to figure it out along the way. Right. So what we do to sustain our business is we can sell this data about the threats um, as threat intelligence. But a big problem we figured out along the way is that it's not actually, threat intelligence is not used proactively most of the time. So most of the time you have some incident and then you buy uh, yourself a lot of IP data to see uh, what kind of uh, people you had in your logs. And for this use case, uh, our, our data is good, but it's not a good way to sustain this business in the long term. Uh, what is a proactive use is actually detecting anonymization. So um, VPNs, proxies, and so on, because it might be interesting for, for instance, for Netflix, right, to know that you're not <laughs> uh, an American and you're just uh, going there because there's a bigger supply of uh, TV series in America. Right. So the massive plan is to snitch to Netflix and get very rich. We'll see about that. So the research questions we have is, um, can we detect VPN proxies in our data? And can we do this better than others in some way? And uh, the answer to this is, yes, we can certainly detect it, of course. Um, but uh, maybe we're not necessarily better than anyone else. Uh, but at least you can buy our data and then look at it and judge for yourself. So there are some caveats. Uh, CrowdSec data is limited. We only see abuse. We only get reports if there is an actual uh, incident. Uh, we only see what attack scenario the attacker triggered and not what he did. So SH brute force, for instance, we only see uh, this guy did the brute force attack. We don't see what kind of users he tried, what kind of passwords he tried, and so on and so forth. Uh, and this extends to a lot of stuff, uh, for instance, HTTP, where it's... Uh, where you get a lot more information, but we don't get this information. So, for instance, we don't see user agents or connection hashes, which are very, very useful when you're trying to de-anonymize people. When you see, oh, this guy has 15 user agents coming from the same IP, yeah, he might be a proxy, right? But we don't see this, uh, so we don't know. So, the four steps. The first step, uh, we dismissed it now. 
uh, now we get to the real step. So the first, first step is to get labels for our data. And for this, we sourced a lot of uh, OSINT uh, sources. There are uh, good lists out there. There are good providers out there whose licenses are, are very permissive that allow us to basically build this uh, product. Uh, an example of like a bad provider in some sense is Spurus. Uh, they don't allow us uh, to build stuff with their data. Um, on the other hand, we have stuff like Shodan, which is super permissive, who are like, oh yeah, you can do this, uh, we don't care. Um, just mention us, uh, we're mentioning them here. They're very cool, uh, go uh, look at their product. And the, the step two is to wrangle our data and see uh, how we can actually turn it uh, into a useful uh, thing. So. What we look at here at this talk is uh, two of our four key data points, let's say. So this is the static analysis and the dynamic analysis. So the static analysis. So let's look at scenarios. So this is, uh, it's a pretty confusing graph, but basically we can look at the IPs we have. We split it into the set of IPs we have identified as proxies and those we do not uh, have identified. And then we look is there attacks that are more frequent for proxy IPs than non-proxy IPs? Or on the other hand, that are more frequent for not proxy IPs. So here are some attacks that are rarely anonymous. SH brute force, for instance, right? Uh, this is because usually uh, machines that do this attack are themselves captured machines and they just uh, try to propagate the attack uh, to, to other people. The other here is, is from our partner GetShield who protects WordPress um, machines. And this is author phishing. It's basically if you add a certain query parameter to a WordPress, so, so you request something from a WordPress site and you add a certain query parameter, then it allows you to basically um, get a, a forwarded to this author's page. And this allows you to enumerate uh, the users that are writing content for this page and in some sense uh, get access to what the username of the admin is, right? And this is usually the goal because then you can just start brute forcing passwords in a second step. So right, this attack is rarely anonymous. On the other hand, we have attacks that are often anonymous. So uh, this is mark spam, these are uh, <laughs> basically comments or whatever that is marked as spam uh, on the WordPress site. This is mostly done uh, through anonymous traffic and very rarely done on a real IP. So this is our basic uh, insight from this analysis is that attackers use anonymization if interrupted attacks are still successful. So this mark spam is very uh, clear example of this. There's also could be uh, port scans, for instance, where you just scan parts of the ports and then if your IP gets banned you just regenerate the new IP and then you uh, keep on scanning from where you left off and this way you can en enumerate all the ports right so for dynamic analysis uh, we came into with some hypothesis so we expect changes in the text coming from an VPN or proxy uh, when the user behind the service changes because fundamentally you have some machine that is a VPN or a proxy, and then behind it you have a bunch of different users, and it targets a bunch of different sites. So when another user takes care of the machine, uh, we might see this reflected in the ki kind of attacks uh, that are coming from this machine. We might see it in the kind of uh, frequency of attacks, so it might just, you know, some user that is actually not malicious and is just using it to anonymize the traffic might take over the machine and then we don't see it at all for, for quite some time. And our data is, is vast enough uh, to actually see these changes manifest. So to do this analysis a bit more formal, we, we do define what is called an attack pattern. Oh, I'm not supposed to turn, I think. So um, each row, we basically write down, um, we have an attack, and uh, an IP, and then we wrote uh, write down for each IP for each day what percentage of attacks is coming from a certain scenario. So for the first row here, we have 30% uh, is coming from attack one, 30% is coming from attack three, and 30% is coming from attack four, right? And he keeps doing this for a couple of days, and then suddenly it switches to 50% of attacks are attack one, and 50% of attacks are attack two, right? This is uh, data we see. Um, it's a bit made up for, for this talk, of course, but 
the, there is a problem here, and they, it's an infinite number of possible patterns, right? If there is a low amount of attacks, yeah, combinatorically, there is not that many cases you can have. But with some people, we see like a thousand times each day. So even small deviations uh, in what kind of attacks we see might cause a different attack pattern. So we needed some way to like group attacks together um, so that it's kind of sensitive uh, to big uh, changes, but small changes is still the same attack, right? So let's go through an example. So the green days here are obviously the same pattern. It's the same numbers, probably the same guy attacking. Um, but we have this yellow day, which is 0 0.4, 0, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. And now it, it's not exactly the same, but it might just have gotten unlucky. There might have been a date cut off. You know, it happens. Um, so this might still be the same uh, attack if you compare it, for instance, to what they did on the 31st of May. is 50% uh, attack 1 and 50% attack 2. This is a very radically different pattern. So... Um, what we use here is uh, machine learning. <laughs> um, so there are methods uh, to automatically cluster uh, data points uh, in higher dimensional spaces. And this is uh, for, for, for this Excel sheet here. This is a six dimensional space, right? It's not that big, but uh, for our backend, it's like 250 uh, dimensional. Still, these uh, methods are very efficient. They find centers of clusters. Um, that group the data into nice groups. And there's a lot of stuff left out here, of course. Uh, I do have a job, so, so this is uh, <laughs> part of the reason why I have it, so I can leave this stuff out. Um, but they, center, they, they give us centers to these clusters, and then we can just divide the, the space into these Voronoi regions. These are this is the technical term, term for this is basically it's, there's a region around each point where every point is closest to this point, right? Compared to all the others, and these are called the Voronoi regions. So if we have a new day coming in, we can just check what kind of regions it, it falls in, what kind of region it, it falls into, and this is uh, where we classify this attack. So all these regions, each region is an attack signature in some sense, and uh, everything that goes into each region is considered an attack of this time. So. From this, we built this uh, pattern detection pipeline. So we aggregate the data day by day. So we get the Excel sheet. And then we apply the cluster to every day, so to every row of this Excel sheet. And then we just count the number of distinct cl clusters. And if we see this uh, a lot of uh, changes here, uh, then it's more likely to be a, a proxy or VPN. Let's see the time. Yeah, we're still in time. Good. Um, and there is actually some more that we have. So, so let's recall this Excel sheet. Um, there is many of you have probably noticed this because you're of course paying attention. Is um, there are some missing days, and this is actually a very common pattern for for anonymi anonymized save services. Is because we only see abuse, and so if there is no abuse coming because just legit users are using this proxy then we have missing days in, in our data. And so what we also did was we looked at attack frequency, right? Does the um, frequency of attack change? Are there days where it's just very active and then it interrupts and then it takes up again? Uh, stuff like this. And this also falls uh, as, a, as, an inform as a data point that, that we have. So the insight from dynamic analysis is really this, by nature, VPNs and proxies have very erratic traffic. And this is a pattern we can detect and optimize for very easily. So the, the stuff I just told you, even if you had no look into the data and would have to write down ideas of how to detect it, you would come up with this very quickly. And it turns out the intuitions we have about how VPNs and proxies have uh, traffic actually hold very well in, in practice. So. Now we have done the second step. We wrangled our data, and now it's actually useful. The step three is we plug this all into a magic black box uh, that we call machine learning again, uh, and uh, see what we get. And uh, this is you know, basically the architecture diagram of, of this. So, so we collect a bunch of different uh, data points. We have some additional info here uh, that I've left out in this talk. One is from Shodan directly. There's port scan information. Usually, there are some ports 
uh, <laughs> if they have them open, very likely a proxy. You can even just look it up on Shodan, and if you see like socks something running on this port, yeah, you're already done. Uh, there's some community stuff here. There's basically our trust management system that also has to uh, uh, take its uh, turn uh, because we fundamentally need to decide whether we can trust the signals for this uh, specific uh, IP or not. Uh, there's also some training optimization. So we scraped these labels, and the chances are they are incomplete. That there are IPs in our data that are not uh, labeled, even though they should be. And so we trained our model to maximize what we call recall, which is low false negatives. The trade-off is that you get a lot of false positives. What we think is that some of these false, po false positives, and we've like verified this, you know, um, are actually VPNs and proxies that are just not labeled by all the services that we found. So our model is quite trigger happy, but it's supposed to be. Right. So now we have the fourth step with the final step. We deploy this to AWS uh, without running out of budget. And uh, yeah, uh, this is an impossible step. No. Um, for, for real, these uh, models we've used are very cheap, so we put this all into lambdas uh, and run it uh, quite quickly. It takes like half a second, most of it is, uh, is database transaction. So, uh, this is what I had for you today. This is how we uh, detect uh, proxies and, and VPN IPs uh, at CrowdSec. And now, if you want to, hold up, if you want to try this yourself, we've released actually recently a, an open data set of uh, six gigabyte of, of labeled data, where you can build your own model. Uh, it's on Kaggle. It's a Kaggle competition. And uh, we're giving away uh, like a pretty beefy graphics card uh, to the winner. So check the link, uh, try it out for yourself. And even if you don't need our data for a competition or everything, but want to look at how, how our data works, uh, it's there. It's free. It's uh, CC by SA. So use it. And uh, thank you for your attention.